Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is going to be a little bit different video. Um, I'm going to be talking about telescopes. The last five, six days I've spent pretty frustrated just learning how to use this damn thing. And I knew it would be a little difficult. And I went into it, you know, knowing that it wasn't going to be uh, the easiest thing. Yeah, it's been pretty fun. And I really wish that a video that the video I'm making now would have existed and I would have found it six days ago because it would have you know, it would have helped me out a lot. So that's the goal of this video is just kind of for first time users, actually setting it up and using it all in one video. Everything I'm telling you, you can find over the course of several videos and a lot of articles and it can be quite frustrating. Um, but the thing is, is it's gonna take some practice to learn how to use this. It's, it's a skill, it's gonna take some uh, time. You're not gonna be able to just set it up and run outside and aim it up and all of a sudden see glorious nebulas and the rings around Saturn and it's gonna take some time to really learn how to use it so know that and if you accept that then uh, you can have a lot of fun with it there's five things you really need to know and you'll probably f come across to all five of those things in separate videos um, and I'm really hoping to cram them all into one you gotta get your finder scope which is this guy here it, it has to be aligned um, my first night out it wasn't aligned and it was just frustrating. Essentially, it's very intuitive. You're going to want to do this in the daylight. It's easiest and you're going to want to aim it at something that's solid and attached to the earth. So don't do this with a star because they are moving through the sky. And you're going to want to do it with something that's about a half a mile or more away. Usually people say to find like a chimney top or a flagpole and essentially you're just going to get that particular object um, lined up in your finder scope center dead center in the finder scope and dead center in your eyepiece and use like a low powered eyepiece of course once you get that lined up they're both lined up center then it's it's set up properly now what do you need to do is get it centered in your eyepiece and then go to your finder scope the screws that are holding it in place can be loosened and tightened in a way that can aim it in different directions it's not very easy to do and it takes a little time and it's a little frustrating but once you get them lined up it's gonna make everything a thousand times easier so do that in the daylight before it gets dark you don't have to be balanced you don't have to be polar aligned those are all things we're gonna get into so speaking of all those things <laughs> the five things you need to know is align your finder scope which is a big one ensure that your tripod is level We'll go into a little bit more detail about that. Make sure that your telescope is balanced. Know how to pull or align your telescope, and then don't touch your telescope. <laughs> so we're going to get in all five of those things, hopefully as quickly as possible. When we get out to where we're going to set up, where we're going to use the telescope, we need to do these next four steps every time. Our tripod needs to be level. Okay? And then you gonna have to take this heavy bastard off on this telescope you loosen this bottom bolt and you lift the beast off the only way I've found that's really useful for balancing this there are some videos that show you some clever ways to do it the only way I've found is a good old level the level on my phone doesn't work very well you set it on there and you adjust the legs of the tripod until it's level in all directions. It's really important or the polar alignment and everything won't work properly. All right, we've leveled the tripod. The second thing we need to do is we need to balance the telescope. So what that means is if we loosen these clutches, this right ascension clutch and this declination, which those words probably don't mean anything to you. They didn't to me five days ago. Um, but anyway, essentially loosen everything so that the telescope can move freely. Um, and once we're polar aligned, that's the only way we'll move the telescope. On those two axes, we will not move the, the tripod around to aim it where we want. You don't do that. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use this counterweight to balance the tripod. 
And as you can see, it can move moves this way and this way. We're just going to lock the declination, and we're just going to mess with the right ascension. Um, it only moves this direction. Essentially, no matter where I put it, we don't want it to move. So with it loose, I can put it in any spot, and it stays level. Now, if I were to put it in a spot and it started twisting this way, I would move my weight up and down the shaft to level it. I say level, I mean balance. All right, so let's put this way up here. If we do this, you can see if I let go, the tube wants to drop, so we know that we need to bring this weight down. Come down here. Still not quite enough. So essentially, you want to get it in a spot where no matter where you put it, it's going to stay level. And you can see right there, not super great. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit more. And we're looking pretty level. So we've leveled the uh, right ascension axis. We're going to twist it on a 90 degree angle. And we're going to balance the uh, declination axis, which is this one here. And we're just going to do the same thing, just twist it. And if it were rolling one way or another, we would loosen these clamps. And we would physically slide the uh, tube up and down until it just was balanced as well and just stayed where we were. Ooh stayed where we put it. So we've aligned our finder scope. We've leveled the tripod. We've balanced both axes of the telescope. We're getting really close to actually being able to use the dang thing. In order to track the stars as they move across the night sky, you're going to constantly be moving the telescope. You'll have these slow motion controls and I only have one down here. But essentially you hook these up. Uh, one will go here. Or it can go on this side. And the other one can go here. They're extremely useful once you get locked in on a target. You're going to use these slow motion controls to track the star or the object through the sky. And with this equatorial mount, which I should have mentioned at the beginning, this is all pertaining to an equatorial mount, which is this type of mount. The way the equatorial mount is designed is once you get polar aligned and set up and locked in on a target, to follow that target's curve across the sky, all you're going to have to do is twist the right ascension slow motion control cable, which will be hooked up over here. And you just slowly turn that and it will just track the star. It will track it in the proper orientation as well. The last thing we need to talk about is uh, getting polar aligned. So, let's get polar aligned. We've leveled, we've balanced, our finer scope is working. We need to get polar aligned. The telescope, as we loosen this bolt here, can rotate this way. Now remember I told you when we're looking for objects through the night sky, we're only going to be rotating along these two axes. So this is going to be locked in once we get polar aligned. We're going to get this aiming directly north, right at the north star, Polaris. And we're going to, to get in the right ballpark. If you look at this dial here, it's got 0 to 90 degrees. Set that at your longitude. So search, I'm in Salt Lake City, so search Salt Lake City longitude, and it'll give you the degrees. I'm at around 40 degrees. So if I uh, loosen this guy, and then adjust this guy, it changes where I'm set. And uh, I essentially want to set that to about 40 degrees. We're going to change that to get lined up with the star, but that's going to get us in the right spot. So if you aim this guy north, and you set this at the longitude of your location, 
you're going to be pretty much aimed right at the North Star already. Now we're going to go into our finder scope and we're going to look down and we're going to get the North Star directly in the crosshairs but we're not going to adjust any of the slow motion controls or any of this stuff. That's None of that is going to be adjusted. This is all set and centered and locked. That's how we normally move throughout the sky but not when we're getting polar line. We're going to adjust by rotating here and adjusting how much we're looking up and down here. So we're going to find out, we're going to look at the North Star and we're going to realize, oh, we're a little high. So we're going to make this adjustment here. We're going to go up and down here. And we're not going to twist this that way. And we're going to move this back and forth until we're right lined up with the North Star. We're going to look at our eyepiece and we're going to get perfectly lined up with the North Star. Then we're going to lock this down. We're going to lock this down. And we're polar aligned and we don't touch those adjustments ever again until after we set up in a new location. Leave the tripod there. I'm, you'll be amazed at how little, how many of the videos you see about polar alignment don't mention that you can't touch anything after that. Because <laughs> I got polar aligned my first time and then I wanted to aim at something behind me and I loosened this guy up and swung it around to aim at the thing, the object behind me. You can't do that. It seems easy enough, but you can't. You gotta keep that locked and keep this guy locked once you're in polar alignment. So now we're level, our finer scope's tuned, we're balanced, and we're polar aligned, and now we can finally use the telescope. Let's say we're locked, polar line. We're going to loosen our declination clutch and our right ascension. And we're going to move. Remember, it should stay wherever we put it because it's balanced. Now, we only have this axis here and this axis here. So it's kind of hard to get it exactly where you want it. But if you're clever enough you'll get there. You can turn him this way. You can come around here. And theoretically, we should be able to aim him wherever we want. Now you can see that way over here, it'd be really hard to look in this eyepiece. So we can loosen these two clamps and rotate our uh, entire tube to get things where they need to be. Just remember that might get a little out of balance. You have to rebalance it back up. So that's how you look around. You're set up. You're not going to move that tripod. You're not going to you're not going to change your angle. You're not going to move anything <laughs> except for these. And then once you find it and you get locked in on the object, all you're going to have to do to track that object through the sky is adjust your right ascension knob. So you'll be watching it and you'll just be slowly turning that right ascension slow motion control, which looks just like this, but would be hooked up on the right side. And it's gonna track the motion of that star through the sky. And once you get it set up, it's pretty cool. It seems like a lot, it seems like a pain in the ass, and it kind of is. But it's really cool once it works. I was going to go into these setting circles a little bit, but I don't have a goddamn clue how they work. I've watched a few videos and none of them really make sense. Supposedly, they help you find objects in the sky, but I don't really know how to set them up. I thought I did. I thought once I was polar aligned, I'd put this guy on zero, and then I would be able to find objects in the sky. It hasn't been working out, so maybe I'll get back to you on that. Um, I really hope this video didn't make you more confused. It's really designed to just say, hey, these are the five main things you got to do for this to work. And if you do them, it'll work. If you want more information on how to do them more precisely, there's lots of videos and you can go to those five things. But even if somebody would have just told me, hey, make sure you know how to do these five things before you go out, that would have been nice. Some kind of direction. Um, but it's been about five, six nights, and I'm finally getting it to the point where... Uh, I can start tracking some stuff. So 
I might stay up all night to try and see Jupiter. It's supposed to come up tonight. So, thanks for watching. Um, if I really get into this hobby, I'm sure there will be more videos to come. Have a good one.